you for the opportunity, uh, sir. And uh, next few minutes, we'll see on uh, decoding the glaucoma module premium edition, which uh, is upcoming and uh, it's changing the basics of OCT interpretation, which was traditionally the Brooks membrane opening horizontal rim width, but now the talk is on Brooks membrane opening minimum rim width, how relevant it is in current era, no financial disclosure. And uh, let me start with an animation here. The green line is the internal limiting membrane and the red line is the Brooks membrane and the red dot here, as you can see, is the Brooks membrane opening. So once the segmentation of the internal limiting membrane and the Brooks membrane is done and the red dot that is the Brooks membrane opening is marked, now we can see that uh, there is an yellow line which is going through, which is the Brooks membrane opening minimum rim width. That is the smallest distance between the internal limiting membrane and the Brooks membrane opening. So this is what is currently revolutionizing uh, the OCT interpretation. So uh, let us decode it from the point of uh, the spectralis or the glaucoma module premium edition. So what is the true margin of the optic disc? So which is something which is very debatable. So clinically, if you see the inner edge of the sclera, that is the Elsening's ring, was actually defined as the disc margin. I'm using this box diagrams on the bottom to uh, convey the concepts better. The sclera, as you can see, was thought to be the true margin. But then in OCT, the termination of the Brooks membrane, which is known as the Brooks membrane opening, is defined as the disc margin. So there comes the confusion. So previously we see the sclera is clinically thought as the real margin, but then the termination of the Brooks membrane is now thought to be the real margin. So definitely both are not the same. As you can see, there is a slight difference between both the anatomical structures. There is two different areas then. One is the clinically assessed area. As you can see that the green dotted lines depicting the sclera on the right hand side color fundus photograph, the clinically assessed area is taking into account the scleral termination. Then the Brooks membrane, that is the red dotted area, is taking into the account the Brooks membrane opening base disc margin. And then that has a different area. So we'll have to come to some consensus regarding what is the real disc area or the disc margin. Because we have two areas for debate. But then the study by uh, uh, Chauhan et al. and others revealed that clinical disc area, you can see it is always larger. That is the one that sclera shows is always larger than the one that the Brooks membrane opening area shows in normal and in glaucomatocyte was put to rest. There cannot be two swords in a one sheath, it has to be only one. That is when the study by Chow and et al, as you can see, one of the most popular studies cited by many, gave an end to this discussion that the true boundary of the optic disc margin is the Brooks membrane because no blood vessels and axons can pass through putting that, risk, putting that debate to rest. So again, coming back to the basics, uh, this is like the Niagara Falls and I'm just trying to metaphorically correlate with this structure. So the glaucoma module premium edition, what it does is it selectively uh, segments the Brooks membrane opening. It takes at least 48 Brooks membrane opening. So again, I'm bringing you back to this animation here where you can see that the internal limiting membrane, the Brooks membrane, the red structure and the red dot is the Brooks membrane opening. And then it completely gives you 48 sections of Brooks membrane opening. Not only that, it brings into the concept of the minimum rim width. So traditionally what we were doing is we were just taking the horizontal direction as the horizontal rim width and we were examining the patient. But this technology has revolution and it has told that at every 48 segmented sections, it is the minimal distance between the green internal limiting membrane and the red dot that is the Brooks membrane opening, which should be taken into account. So that is called the Brooks membrane minimum rim width, the smallest distance between those two structures. So every decision goes against something else, isn't it? So when we go to BMO MRW, then we'll have to see why we can't use BMO horizontal rim width. You can see in this figure, the horizontal rim width is different, the minimum rim width is different. So many studies have now come out with this that the BMO MRW yields a higher diagnostic performance than the Brooks membrane opening horizontal rim width. Even the sensitivity of the Brooks membrane minimal rim width is very consistently high with the retinal nerve fiber layer defect and the HRW. And even this, again, another study uh, done which reveals the same. So also if you see the visual fields correlations, they were also better with Brooks membrane opening minimum rim width compared to the horizontal rim width. The plots are more concentrated in minimum rim width. The RNFL is also now correlating better with MRW. So again, coming back to the inception of us, every one of us has a different optic disc, that's where we are. 
So the curse of it is always the size of the optic disc will influence the neuroretinal rim because every one of us will possess a different optic disc with a different optic size. So imagine a large disc and a small disc having the same neuroretinal rim area. On the left hand side and the right hand side, both the discs seems to be different but they have the same neuroretinal rim area. A large disc will always have a smaller BMO MRW whereas a smaller disc will always tend to have a large BMO MRW. But in reality, the neuroretinal rim area is the same. So that kind of a, a, an influence will be reduced somewhat when we take the BMO MRW into the equation. So the summary is, when we take BMO MRW characteristics, the BMO is nothing but the disc area. It's another term that OCT is giving into play when we take into OCT. BMO area influences the diagnostic precision of the BMO MRW but not the RNFL and if the BMO area increases the diagnostic precision of BMO MRW decreases so this is very very important what it means is whenever there is a disc which is bigger then you go and choose RNFL because as I showed you in this diagram this BMO MRW will be smaller but when you have a disc which is smaller you can go for BMO MRW that will be more reliable so this is a very new terminology that is popping out and uh, it's a very objective method. It has a lot of additives like GPS system that is compared to a traditional OCT, eye movements will be lost. But in this, even when there is an eye movement, it is, it is software picks up. So every time during a progressive examination, same piece of tissue is examined. So that's the beauty about this particular technology. Even with eye movement, even with the head movement or cyclotorsions, the same piece of tissue is again and again examined. And that is what this uh, technology brings into place. So that progressive analysis of glaucoma patient, even when it is very subtle as you can see in this patient, we can easily uh, subtle uh, glaucomatous progression very early. So uh, this concept has been published by myself in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology uh, in 2021 April issue, as well as a video based animative uh, guide regarding how BMO MRW is different from BMO HRW is also published last year in IGO videos in the June issue. So please feel free to uh, see those for more information. So I feel glaucoma uh, module premium edition, which is an upcoming uh, terminology, at least in OCT interpretation, is the future glaucoma toolkit and one of the armamentarium of a glaucomatologist. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pinkatesh, for a lovely presentation and giving this concept. Uh, any question from this? How much time do we have? Yes, just we can take one question. Do you have uh, any question from the audience regarding this? Okay, you said that we can follow it more precisely with this. Yes, sir. But then if the variability is the same, because suppose you take whatever we are taking right now, with that also, if we compare it over time, yes, sir. probably the difference will be similar as you consider this in the beginning to begin with and then uh, uh, follow it progressively. Have you tried to differentiate between the two or compare? Uh, sir, uh, personally, that is also possible, sir. With the traditional OCT which takes the horizontal room width, that is also a possibility. But what this technology brings into play is the GPS kind of a system where a small head tilt or that may even uh, be a game changer because what it does is it first marks the macula, sir, center of macula and then the center of the disc. Then there is a fovea BMO axis. For want of time, I didn't discuss that. So that plotting makes a real lot of difference in mapping the entire sector. But advice is if there is a traditional OCT, then follow up the patient in the same mission. If you are going for this, then follow up the patient in this particular technology. But this that is also still only in spectralis. This is only, this uh, tech, GPS is only have currently. You, have you seen this uh, minimum rim width progressing uh, in a patient where you have seen progression on funda, on perimetry? Y yes, sir. It correlates with the it perimetry. Correlates. Uh, correlates, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Prasanna. Thank you. No, but one message which I want to give to everyone, that OCT, whenever you are doing probably, he also said that last sentence. It should be always done on the same machine. Mm -hmm. Because there is no point doing it yes. once in this clinic, second some other clinic then some third clinic because then you cannot compare at all and that is the main function yes. of uh, OCT according to me in relation to glaucoma. Yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, this is automated, automated. Uh, automated, but the segmentation has to be manually corrected. Sometimes yeah. if the ILM is not segmented properly,